Hi, this is Andrew Smith, instructor at Ferris State University and runner of artbysmitty.com. Today we're going to be going over alpha maps, how they're created, and how we use them and apply them in 3D Studio Max. So here's an image of a leaf that I found online. If we go here and I'm going to go to my textures and I go to cgtextures.com uh, you can find a lot of these leaves here by going into nature and clicking on leaves or any other type of foliage that you want. A lot of these come with pre-matted alphas uh, with them but I'm going to go over how to create this uh, in case you're taking pictures by yourself but if you don't these are great resources to use uh, online so be aware of this site and this is where I pulled the image from I believe can't quite remember so let's get started why don't you first open up Adobe Photoshop I'm using CS4 and I'm just going to drag my image into the scene uh, and right now I have my brush selected but I'm not going to be brushing at all um, notice it comes in on a background layer uh, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to create a new layer and delete this background layer uh, this new layer is just going to be called BG for my own background um, I'm going to hit G activate my paint bucket and switch my color to my primary color to white and turn this layer off so we can see what we're doing uh, those checkerboards are Photoshop's way of saying that I have transparent in this layer right now so I'm going to fill it with white and then I turn back on this leaf layer so if I were to come in here with the eraser brush and start erasing some of this layer uh, the bottom white layer is going to come in and if I don't have that it's going to be obviously looking like that so let's undo that. I'll go back to, I'm going to rename this layer to Leaf. I always get in the habit of naming stuff. Uh, that's one of the most annoying things is when you open up someone else's file at work and and they don't have things named correctly or they have, you know, a thousand layers that you have no idea what they do. So one thing I'm going to do, you notice I'm having this polygon lasso tool uh, and that's right here. Um, or you can use a magnetic lasso tool and that's going to kind of just try and pick edges um, as you draw them and it works sometimes depending on what image you're using but as you can see here we're getting some errors up in here and over here so I'm going to close that off and um, hit M to activate marquee tool and just click in space to unselect that that selection. Uh, I'll go back here and activate my polygon lasso tool. This is usually the one I like to use the most. So I can zoom in and out here with my navigator. If you don't have this up, it's just in Window and Navigator. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I want to do is basically an alpha map is a black and white image. And it, you know, grayscale. It can be grayscale too. Um, if something's gray, it's going to be somewhat transparent. If it's white, or sorry, if it's black, if it's black, it's going to be completely transparent. Uh, so let's go in here and we basically want to get rid of all the background noise from this leaf. So I'm going to come in here and zoom in quite a bit and I'm just going to start selecting um, the edges of this leaf that I want to kind of section off. And sometimes I'm using a tablet so sometimes I accidentally double click closing my selection and that's not good. So usually when I get to a stopping point I come in here double click and I have this selection saved I can move my navigator now over to here and I'm gonna hold shift and when I hold shift you see that little plus sign uh, open up or appear next to my polygon lasso tool so that's what we want to do uh, I'm gonna hold shift and click and let off shift and now I can continue with my selection and what this is going to do is allow me to come here to a stopping point come in here double click and it adds to my selection. If I want to keep adding again I have to come over here and hit hold shift again and come along here and, and just start selecting areas that I want to isolate. Okay, missed a little part there. Come in, okay. And now what I'm doing since I'm zoomed into my image I'm going to hold space bar and that's going to allow me to pan as I click. I'm going to let off spacebar and it comes back to my polygon tool and I'm going to hit hold shift and come around here and just keep selecting. Uh, now we'll speed this up and do the entire leaf.
Okay, so now I have some holes in the leaf down here, and with my polygon lasso tool selected, I'm going to hold the Alt key instead of Shift. And Alt will make a little minus sign appear, and what that's going to do is let me deselect areas that I currently have selected. So areas like this hole in the leaf here, I'm going to select them and do the same right next to it. Okay, now that I do this, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to hit G and fill this in with white. And I'm going to hit Control I. Whoops, Control Shift I. And that will invert my selection. And let's change our color to black and fill in the borders uh, and the holes with black. So, like I said, an alpha map is a black and white grayscale image. And what we see in the white is going to be. Uh, included in our texture and what's in black is going to be excluded as long as we save this out with a alpha channel um, or in the case of 3d studio max um, if you're not using a game engine you can actually save this out as a separate map and apply it turn it on and off and stuff so I'm going to name this as alpha mask and so let's go ahead and save this image out show you the first way to do an alpha map uh, to my desktop as uh, leaf underscore alpha and I'll save this as a let's see here we'll save this as a well let's save it as a JPEG for this part of the presentation hit save okay I'll turn this layer off so now we just have the, the leaf I'll hit control shift s and say save as leaf underscore diff for diffuse or my color map and again we want to save this out as a JPEG large file hit OK and now what I want you guys to do is go ahead and boot up 3d studio max okay now with 3d studio max open I'm going to hit uh, my perspective view and hit alt W and I'm going to go to the create panel in the geometry tab and select plane and I'm going to draw a plane into my scene right click to end uh, I'm going to hit G to get rid of my grid hit J to get rid of my bounding box and F4 to turn on my edges okay so let's go ahead take this plane and go to the modify tab and increase the number of width segments so that each polygon is is roughly equal in, equal in size uh, I just like to do that as standard practice or we could just bounce this down to one by one so it's just a single polygon and, and or two triangles uh, I'm gonna right click this and convert it to edible poly I'm going to name this as you know if you're doing a large scene obviously you'd have some kind of prefix like foliage and then underscore leaf underscore zero zero one and hit enter uh, next I'm going to hit M on the keyboard brings up my material editor and I'll come down here to uh, well let's see here we want a standard material and we're going to rename this as leaf let's just say leaf zero zero one and I want to go ahead and go down to maps click diffuse and go find a standard bitmap hit OK and it's gonna look for us to find that diffuse texture which is right here I'll hit open and notice I double click this it brings me up in the, my preview I can, I can right click here and say 3 by 2 samples and I can middle mouse button click this to, to zoom it and then double click to view it Okay, next thing I'm going to do is a click and drag and apply this to my plane and nothing happens, turns gray. So let's go back up a level and scroll back up to the top here. Uh, first thing I want to do is say two-sided and I want to click this button here It says show standard map and viewport and now we can see it kind of shows our leaf uh, in our on our plane. If you're doing a more complex mesh, obviously I have to go and unwrap it first but we have other video tutorials on that so I'm not going to go over unwrapping in this changing my border color, or my edge color to black going right here just a personal preference 
Okay, so now we basically want to alpha map the rest of that out, right? So what we do is we go back down here to maps, and there's a little button here, or there should be a little cl click mark here that says opacity. Let's go ahead and enable that, leave it at 100, and again we're going to go find a bitmap, and let's go find the alpha map. Hit OK, and now we see that with that alpha map applied, um, we're now being able to see through that plane. And if I hit F4, turn off edge mode, you can see uh, our plane now has that alpha map applied to it. And if I hit render, you can see it's looking nice. Okay, so let's hit F4 and edit this plane a little bit. Um, now, since it's an edible poly, I'm going to hit 2 and select these two edges. Right click and say connect with the little box. And I'll say connect this three times. Hit OK. And I'm going to select all these guys or hit 1 and hit Alt R and right click and say connect uh, three times is good. And now what I can do is come in here and um, I can actually apply a bend modifier to this. And let's say this looks good, something like so. Um, and I can even come in here and grab the gizmo and rotate the gizmo. So it edits our leaf a little bit. I'll right click, say collapse all. Yes. Now if I turn off edges, we can see we now have a leaf that has a little bit of geometry. I can even come in here and scale that, uh, make it more uh, noticeable. And now all of a sudden I can maybe even come in here and apply another bend to it and say something like so. Collapse all. And now we have a something that looks like a leaf. Alright, so so that's it. That's how we make we apply alpha maps inside of 3D Studio Max. Uh, thanks for watching.